Hey there, it's Christina, and I am here at um, Arbor Park Apartment Homes, and this is right off Little River Turnpike in Alexandria, actually more specifically Lincolnia up here near um, Landmark, and these apartment homes used to be called formerly Orleans Village, and it's since been renamed. And the reason I'm making this video is I'm kind of making a little documentary because this is where my mom and I lived um, when we first came to, you know, to Virginia in 1984. And I finished school in um, 1985 and 86 at Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology just down the road. And... Um, yeah, we lived here, and my mom, um, we moved from rural Pennsylvania. She got a job with the U.S. Treasury Department, paid a lot more than you could get paid in Pennsylvania. So we came here, and she would take the bus and subway to the Pentagon and then to McPherson Square. Um, she worked in, you know, downtown Washington, D.C., and I um, went to high school here. And during this time, actually, it was, um, you know, it was an interesting time because my mom could only afford a one-bedroom apartment, so I didn't have my own room. She had the master bedroom, and um, she got a sofa bed for me to sleep on, and that's where I slept, and it wasn't all that comfortable, and um, the coat closet was like my clothes closet and that's about all the clothes that I had and that's what we did I guess we made it you know through there and um, made it through that time and it was pretty stressful for her because she um, she would often try to work overtime to make more money and um, I had a key to the house and she would always be worried about me being home alone and everything and I was about, you know, I was 17 and 18 at the time that we lived here, and um, I was a teenager going through all that, and um, it was very stressful for us, and um, I've actually never shared this, but I, I want to um, I wanna say it here. My mom, at this time, she was just trying so hard. She was a single parent, no college you know, commuting for her was very stressful, getting on a bus and a subway and every day having to deal with people. Um, she kind of had a nervous breakdown and she was very um, abusive to me, mostly verbally, sometimes um, physically, and like I like to say, creatively. <laughs> she would um, do, do things to hurt me that, um, you know, she would rip up, like, if I got her Hallmark card or a little gift, she would just destroy it, tear it to pieces. Um, if I liked a certain breakfast cereal, she would just um, throw it all down the um, garbage disposal. Um, I, know, I remember I had a pair of um, Jordache jeans with the little horse uh, embroidered on the back pocket. She knew I loved those. She took scissors to them, and they were expensive, so they, we couldn't re we couldn't replace them. So um, yeah, it it was um, it was it was pretty bad, and it kind of came to a head um, when you know we had this argument at the house, and I ended up with a black eye. And then I went to school, and then that's when people um, learned learned about this because it was vis it was visible. And I always tried to hide it, like I never wanted to tell anybody about the abuse that was going on in in, in the home behind closed doors. I wanted to pretend everything was normal because, like, I I wanted to have friends and good grades, and you know, I just didn't want anybody to know the um, what I was going through. But then when I had the black eye, um, people re realized, like my teachers and the school counselors, and they called the um, county, like, um, child protective services and stuff like that. 
And how I got the black eye actually was I was so scared that I wanted to call the police. So I picked up the telephone and she didn't want me to call the police. And we were literally playing tug of war with the t telephone cord. And I was pulling and she was pulling and she looked right at me and let go. And the phone like um, kind of recoiled, uh, sprung back and hit me in the eye really hard. So that was how everyone found out, you know, and I still tried to like downplay what was going on, but essentially she kind of had a meltdown and she admitted herself to Mount Vernon Hospital outpatient psychiatric, uh, or inpatient psychiatric clinic, or I'm not sure what it's called, and I was taken into um, custody of Fairfax County um, um, emergency foster care and then um, a more permanent foster care. And I received a, a social worker and, um, and counseling um, during this time. So um, I'm making this video in April 2014 and my mom and I lived here um, in 1985 and 86. So it's been a it's been a long time, but um, uh, sometimes I'm reflecting back on this because my mom passed away. She died of pancreatic cancer, October third, two thousand and eleven, um, and I just I realize that I'm not over <clears throat> her death. It's not completely resolved, and my mind keeps going back to some of these old things, trying to um, forgive her. Oh, I have forgiven her. I, I know she was doing the best that she knew at the time. So I'm just trying to resolve things, make peace with the past, try to understand who my mom was from her perspective, not mine, and forgive her and, and you know, and love her and know I mean, if there's any single moms out there, I'm not a single mom, but um, if there's any single moms out there, for, I, I, for whatever reason, you know, whatever the situation is, I totally, I totally understand and can I identify with you how, how hard it is, how, how much of a financial struggle it is to, um, to care for your child. I mean, she often referred to it as a burden, but I... I know that's how she saw it because it was a burden. It was, you know, a huge responsibility if you don't have college education, earning potential, a uh, partner that you can trust to kind of balance daily errands and, you know, time. Um, I, you know, and she was very, very overprotective. She never let me do anything. I couldn't date. I, I really didn't go out much in high school. Um, she was so worried that we came down here to the big city and, you know, she just didn't know what was going to happen to me. And um, that was part of, you know, I wanted my freedom as a teenager. And, and so you can see the both, I, I can see both angles now, which of course I couldn't then. I could only see my perspective. But um, now I can look back and see why she was so overprotective. But I was 17 and 18 and kind of like wanting to, wanting my freedom and friends and go explore the world and she wanted to hold me closer. And um, yeah, it's so, it's so easy to understand now. But I'm sitting here just reflecting on that time. Um, there was a lot of um, painful memories. Uh, the police did come to the apartments here a few times. Um, but thank goodness for teachers and school counselors and social workers and things like that. that um, and foster care, too. That stepped in when um, things got, you know, out of control and there was a crisis. And since these um, road uh, crew people are making so much noise, I think I'm going to end the video. I think I've said everything I really wanted to. Um, but I just, I just want to finish by saying I love my mom. I've forgiven her. 
for all the things that happened here. And um, I just want to make peace with what happened and try to understand from her perspective. And um, if there's anything I could do to help, you know, any single parents, uh, or single mothers in particular, I, I think I understand what you're going through because I look at sometimes when I sing, see a single mother, I see my mom in that, in that woman. And I just sometimes I just want to reach out to her. I don't, I don't understand her. I mean, I don't um, relate to her as a mother because I don't have any children. But I see my mom in, in her, and I feel like I know what she's going through. But anyway, I'm just going to end this video, just a documentation of um, kind of like a digitized version of of um, when I lived here and just um, reflecting and resolving my past. Thank you for watching.